All right, today we're gonna do a little troubleshooting for an X-Class getting a little wobble wobble. And during that wobble, it got so bad that he had to disarm, which is a, could be an expensive problem for an X-Class. So we're gonna take a look at his flight and log and see what we think the problem is that's causing the wobble. He's looking to pid tune it, but obviously you gotta fly it to pid tune it. And if you're having such an issue with a wobble, it makes it hard to enter any decent moves to actually start pit tuning it. And we can talk about some things that you generally want to be doing to set up initially for something like an X-Class or a larger drone. So let's get into it. Okay, so looking at the craft, here she is. Uh, certainly an X-Class, unfortunately it's a broken X-Class. You can see it looks like it uh, broke the arm. Obviously some props here as well. So this is, must be the after photos. Um, but yeah, some beefy ESCs on there, nice DJI unit, and there's that broken arm right there, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, some broken prop. So this is the flight of that X-Class, kind of moving around here, doing a little moves. And there, that oscillation kind of starts, and then uh, he disarms it midair, and you know, because it was kind of getting out of control there. So let's see what we can figure out by taking a look at the log and some of the pit settings he has here in Betaflight. Looking quick here at trace template zero, which I can select with my fancy drop down here in this explorer, that uh, I don't see any vibration issues per se. It's not like there's crazy raw vibrations or anything. So now taking a look at these filter settings that I see in here, I they're a little low and I want to explore that a little bit. I went ahead and punched those in and this is what we are, this is what I'm seeing based on this information that's right here, which you can always pause and take a closer look at. But uh, just punching that into the Betaflight configurator here, you can see we have low pass two set at 50 and that is a PT1 filter. Uh, we have the, we have a static notch filter, which I haven't used those in forever. Cutoff going all the way down to 10, so that's pretty low. Uh, and then the RPM filters and some other things here as well. So let's look at the noise profile, the raw noise profile, and see what may have driven some of that and see if, uh, and just, you know, take a look at it. So bring it up here, noise plots, uh, raw profile, zoom out here a little bit so you can kind of see what that looks like. I don't see anything super alarming uh, in regard to the noise. So let's run the spectrographs here and see what those show us. And you can look here uh, in the handy dandy one, it kind of actually shows you some filter stuff. So we do have a little bit of a spike here at 70 Hertz and we have some stuff at 160, then up at two whatever. Uh, and then we're seeing that on the roll axis, the pitch axis, not so much, and the yaw axis. So just a little spike, a little bit of spike on the on the yaw, just a little bit one here, holding the shift key down for that handy feature. Look at that, you can do that in beta flight back. Explorer, you can't 9F, it's so nice. Nevertheless, let's look at that spike a little bit more. So if I do a frequency versus throttle graph, and you know, sometimes you have to re-click this thing, you can see that we have the motor noise band here. And if I increase that, and that's up in this range, that was at 200 hertz noise. And this looks like a, kind of a residence, and then we have another kind of creeping in here and here as well, going vertically, and then the motor band is is within here, uh, within this range. So this is kind of a resonance. I didn't see really any prop wash, but let's uh, look at what we see here for that oscillation here at the end and see what frequency that's at, because that could be interesting. So that I would not guess is a 70 Hertz frequency and no, it's not more like a three Hertz frequency. So it'd have to be a pretty quick oscillation um, to be that 70 Hertz frequency range. And that's not gonna be any of the motion stuff. So that's just little vibrations in there. That said, I would make some changes here. I just do not like static notches. Uh, why do what you, why do with a static notch what a dynamic notch can do? So. Some things I would change here is I would try to move this 50 Hertz up to maybe 80. Uh, you can see here we have the dynamic D gains uh, pretty low as well. I would try to move these up so that we're at least starting at 60, 120 here, and then move this up to an 80 if you just wanna stick with the static there. And then if you wanted to reach down and let a notch jump on that, frequency down below, I would change this maybe down to a 60 
or even a little bit less if you if you if you wanted to maybe even a 50 to let one of those dynamic notches go down that low and i think two uh having two active notches searching for peaks on that access on the different axes will will do well for you because there is a little bit of those resonances uh, frequencies up a little bit higher there in that motor band area that we just looked at and then the rpm um, filter you could probably knock this down to one just to clear out some of those you don't need additional uh, rpm you don't seem like you have harmonics of the motor band when we looked at those throttle uh, plots so if i come back to here and run that like i don't see like I don't see various heart. Let's see this uh, white area there. I don't see like uh, more harmonics of that up here. Now you don't really have a lot of information. You know, you only really got up to around 50% throttle, uh, kind of limitedly. Uh, so that you know, keep an eye on that. Maybe you do need a, a harmonic or two, but uh, I doubt it. So I would make those adjustments for sure. They might even be more important than the PID advice, and it will be more consequential. You know, by having filters that low adds a lot of the delay to the signal and can induce a wobble and an oscillation all on its own because by the time the signal gets to the PID loop, it's like overcorrecting on a boat. You know, you have, um, it's like taking the boat down the 0%, you know, low thr idle throttle. By the time your input starts to be recognized by the craft because of all the delay or is measured by the craft because of all the delay, it's doing something totally different. So we want to try to minimize that delay. You do need low filters for an X class, but that's kind of pushing it. That, that was kind of pushing it for being that low. So that's something I would definitely give a try at making these filter adjustments. And then in addition to that, there's some adjustments we should be making on the PIDs. So let's look at that. Let's just quickly switch to trace template for stick tracking. Uh, and kind of take a look at that. And you could see at the beginning of the flight, now this was this is the log for that flight that we just looked at. Little wobbly there in the beginning, and little, this is the oscillation at the end. Now, when we're looking at that, uh, it's a little tricky because we, we wanna be up here, of course, at the uh, roll and pitch, but we have this where you can hover over the, the terms here that highlights. So you can see the I term oscillation going on and the P term oscillation. Uh, D terms not really oscillating at all. Uh, we see the, obviously the gyro signal reading that oscillation, no stick inputs there. So it's not a stick thing or anything like that. So it's definitely not a D term oscillation. Uh, it is going to be, I can tell you right now, it's it's going to be an I-term oscillation issue with that kind of slow wobble oscillation. So let's take a look at the PID settings here. And uh, just looking at these quickly, what jumps out at me is, you know, this is X-Class, baby. We want some, uh, the first thing I would do is turn off the the D max P ratio thing between having two different D gains. So what I mean by that is this dynamic damping. I would set that to zero. I want to have just one set of D gains here. I don't want to have like varying D gains. And as you go back and see in here, like D's are as low as 20 and 18. That's pretty low. That's not the key source of our issue. The key source of our issue is really the balance between these two terms specifically. So what we want to do here is we need to get, I think in general, before we kind of focus on the balance of these two terms, we need to get all these PIDs moved up. All right, so pulling this up and you can see in here, he actually has the sliders turned off. So try to get some equivalently since I, like, I think the sliders just make things easier. This settings for the sliders about equals what he has going on here because he has uh, no feed forward. Uh, I, now I did take the dynamic damping all the way down so these match each other on both sides here. Now the, he has the 30 and 18 and the 35, so it's not exactly there, but you can see it's around the 46, uh, 46, 45-ish here, 46, 50, 50, around both around 50. Now here what I would do, so let's, get into what I would say for X-Class. The first thing you need to understand for big quads is they have a big moment of inertia. So it takes a quite a while, you know, there's a lot of rotational mass moving back and forth there. A lot of weight out at the end of those big arms. So you generally have higher PID gains. Looking quickly at his log, I didn't see any vibrational issues, so I'm not afraid to, 
to do what we really need to do and to make this thing fly better, which is generally higher PIDs. Now, specifically on the Y axis, they have a really uh, horrible amount of, of Y um, yaw um, control. So we want to take that up. I would probably start with like 80 and 80, maybe even 100 and 100 there for my Y and have this on RP instead of RPY, just manually enter that one and then uh, he doesn't have any uh, feed forward. That's kind of a preferential thing. We can turn that off there as well and have have that. Uh, the other thing we want to do here is we want to start to just move this stuff up. Uh, this master multiplier is not going to get us everywhere we want to be. Uh, just by looking at this here, see, we're going to get up to like 6270. So I want to have a little bit more space in that. So to do that, what we can do is just take this. Uh, I'll probably take the damping and the tracking slider up to about a 1.5 just to give me a little bit more space here and that will probably do me pretty well so that's kind of where i would sit he already has the drift wobble slider down so that it deals with the uh the um, imbalance to pushing uh, terms, as I call them, they're proportional to integral and uh, getting that ratio down because that's what's what we're seeing out there. We're seeing, you know, basically the PIDs being too low is inducing a wobble and the I term is not helping you there at all in that regard. And you can kind of prove that out just by zooming in a little bit more here. And what I generally say to do is you need to look at the gyro signal and then look at what PID term it looks like, uh, and that will kind of give you a hint when you're looking at a log at what the problem PID term is. So if you look at that gyro signal, you know, does it look more like the I term or the P term? And when you're looking at that, it definitely looks basically like a replica of the I term, just slid down farther, just slid over here a little bit farther. So that is our, our issue term, and it's getting its kickstart of starting this oscillation in general because the PIDs are just so low authority in general. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna bump those PIDs up. This is what I would do. If you want it to be safe, because he's probably a little gun shy with it, you can even reduce those I gains down a little bit more. So maybe take this to a 0.25 here and then have these PID gains up higher like that. Obviously, once you fix that arm and get that, back, that bird back up in the air, you wanna take it cautiously, but PID gains like that should uh, really give you quite a bit of marketable change that you'll be able to low to the ground. Which So what you want to do is be low to the ground so you're not having this issue and it's not going to fall so far and input some sharp step inputs. Uh, you can have, um, it's probably best to have angle mode off for that, but just give some sharp stick inputs back and forth. You, you don't need to be super high off the ground and get comfortable with that and see that you're not going to have you know, that oscillation start. Uh, well then, you know, maybe go up a little bit higher. And again, try to just do a, a quick input. And, you know, you have to click over and then click back to kind of get it to go like that. And, and just kind of get a feel for the bird and then keep moving that a little bit, you know, keep getting a little bit more aggressive with it. Ultimately, uh, if you're not getting a wobble and that kind of solved it, and if it's feeling a little drifty, then you may need to move this, you know, drift wobble slider up. That's kind of what that means. If you're getting a wobble, you're probably on the high end. If you're getting a, if it's a little drifty, you're probably here on the low end. So you can kind of use that and move that around depending on what you want. And then if you're looking for just to increase performance, like, hey, it's flying a lot better. I can fly it and tin it. Obviously moving now that we have some room here and, you know, uh, there's obviously the, the balance between uh, the 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 D gain and the P gain are are a piece of that if you start to see any sharp bounce back. But I don't know if you're going to be really, you know, hitting it that hard or really freestyling this X class all that hard. But if you start to do, you know, if you start to see any real sharp bounce back, then you want to adjust your, you know, increase your damping a little bit more versus your uh, versus your pushing or tracking your P term there. Uh, ultimately, just for like prop wash performance to increase that as, as things go and you get more a little stable with it, you're just going to want to grab that master multiplier. And now since we move these two up to 1.5, we got lots of range. You probably won't need to be getting that high on the gains. So I would think this X class 
Honestly, I would think you'd top out somewhere in this range though. I mean, you're gonna usually have fairly high PIDs on an X-Class quadcopter. And that's the general rule of thumb. The bigger the quad, the higher the moment of inertia, the, the rotational mass that it's dealing with, the higher those PID gains need to be. They're also a little bit more wobbly prone, so you need to have that I to P balance lower. So the I term in relation to the P term, the I gains need to be a little bit lower as we kind of showed uh, right right there, how, how we move that down with that slider there. So hopefully that helps. If you guys enjoyed this kind of video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing down below. And if you really enjoyed it, May I mention that I do have a Patreon for a low as $2 a month. You can join that to help support the channel and get some bonus content and some bonus little goodies that I have up there on my website, theuavtech.com. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to drop them down in the comments below. Thanks, everybody. Hope this helps. and We'll see you in the next one.